How did we get to this place where fats that are so important for us uh, that the body needs in all sorts of ways have been demonized, made into the villain? It was a very carefully orchestrated and calculated campaign by the vegetable oil industry to demonize their competition. And what was in animal fats that was not in vegetable oils? Saturated fat and cholesterol. So they zoomed in on these two things and in something that cannot be supported by the science made people afraid of saturated fat and cholesterol. We've seen two things. We've seen the addition of vegetable oils to the diet. <clears throat> that could be the liquid vegetable oils, which are highly processed, rancid, or it could be the vegetable oils that have been hardened to resemble animal fats. Those are the trans fats. We've never had these in the human diet in the history of the world. And these types of uh, inappropriate fats not only are they bad for you, but they have replaced the fats that are good for us. And the fats are so crucial for growth and development. Uh, trans fats are, are sort of a disastrous entry into the, into the food supply. Uh, trans fats are basically, uh, they're not really synthetic fats, they're, they're altered fats. I mean, the, problem is is that with all of the negative publicity that in, in my opinion is is unwarranted about saturated fats people had to to find some way to duplicate the cooking properties of saturated fats saturated fats are great for cooking that's where you get flaky biscuits and and they act as as a shortening which makes things flaky it makes cookies cookies and it makes crackers crackers and it makes you know uh, bread flaky and it does all the things that you like to have in baking because it's solid at room temperature and it, and it has some other some other cooking qualities that that make it useful to cook you, you couldn't make these cookies and crackers and, and things of that sort from oil. You had to have a, a more solid fat. And the only way they could do that was to make the fat into something that wasn't what the oil had been. And the only way you could do that was to put it into a hydrogenator and make it uh, solid. They uh, figured out how you could take polyunsaturated fats and by putting them under, heating them, putting them under pressure and bubbling a nickel catalyst up through the whole thing uh, in the presence of a lot of hydrogen that you could reconfigure the molecules so that they, what's called, pack better. In other words, they, they pack closer together. Polyunsaturated fats have all kinds of, of double bonds and so they're, you know, like a, a Brillo pad or something, you know, they're, they're real loose and that's what makes them liquid. Saturated fats don't have those, so they pack tighter. That makes them solid. Well, if you switch the configuration of the polyunsaturated fat and make it a trans fat, it packs more tightly and so it acts like a, uh, a, a saturated fat. It has the cooking qualities of a saturated fat. They, are, uh, they have a, a cleaner sense of, uh, of feel or taste and they are cheap. They're very cheap. And they also support the um, uh, soy industry. You see, we never had a soy industry. If you look back at the um, Agricultural Research Service data, we didn't have a soy industry before the Second World War. We had uh, the, the leftovers from uh, animal fats from a cook's perspective, almost better than a saturated fat because it doesn't have any taste. Most saturated fats, you don't get pure saturated fat. It comes from something that's either lard or it's coconut oil or it's palm oil. It's something like that, and so you get the taste of whatever it comes from, but pure old uh, trans fat is just you know, white and pretty, and it cooks, and everything flakes, and there's no taste, and so cooks love it. But unfortunately, it's not really good for us because sad to say our bodies love it too and it gets picked up preferentially in the cell membranes and fats in the cell membrane is what makes the cell membrane do what it's supposed to do and if our cell membranes aren't functioning the way they should be we're in real trouble. So what was the big scare over tropical oils? Well the tropical oils, the scare was invented by Center for Science and the Public Interest who by their own admission was being supported by the soy industry 
And what was competing with the soy industry at this point? They'd gotten the tallow out of the food supply, but they still had some competition from coconut oil and, and palm oil in, um, in baked goods. And by the way, we say coconut oil and palm oil, but these, are, these act like fats. They're mostly uh, saturated fats in them. And so then they mounted a campaign against palm oil and coconut oil, just the way they had mounted the campaign against uh, tallow. And what was their complaint? It was competing. They wanted the movie theaters to use partially hydrogenated soybean oil instead of coconut oil or instead of palm oil. So, so they invented this, uh, you know, they accused coconut oil and palm oil of crimes they didn't commit. And their evidence was just because they're saturated? Just because they're saturated. What's the lowdown? Okay, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up canola oil because, as I mentioned, it became more and more obvious that corn oil was an, a disaster. And the corn oil is very high in polyunsaturates. There's basically three types of fats, polyunsaturate, monounsaturate, and saturate. The polyunsaturates are liquid even when you put them in the fridge. The monounsaturates are liquid at room temperature but hard in the fridge, and the saturates are solid even at room temperature. That's how you can tell the difference. Uh, so anyway, the studies were showing that the corn oil was a disaster. Uh, Americans uh, were getting more and more interested in their health. And the industry realized it could not promote corn oil as being healthy, because it was obviously not. Uh, they couldn't go back to promoting saturates because they'd spent 50 years demonizing saturates. So the only thing they could do at that point was promote monounsaturate. And that's when you started hearing about the wonderful Mediterranean diet, and they're healthy because they use olive oil. Well, the Mediterranean diet, and I was a student in southern France, and I can tell you that the Mediterranean diet is mostly organ meats. It's pate it's, it's, and cheese, you know, a lot of saturated fat there. But they were saying it was because of the olive oil. The problem was there was not enough olive oil in the world to use in processed food, and olive oil, like animal fats, is expensive. So they needed another monounsaturated fat, and that's when they came up with canola oil, which is basically rapeseed oil. Uh, uh, tradition. I was going to say that you don't pluck canolas off. Trees. No, it's uh, it's a, from the mustard family, and it was it's basically rapeseed oil that was genetically manipulated to get rid of certain components they thought were unhealthy, and it's grown a lot in Canada, so they named it after Canada. They really didn't think that the public would like to buy rapeseed oil, and so they d named it canola oil. Nice. Canola oil was immediately promoted as being heart healthy. I thought this is a great oil for the heart. It's low in saturated fat, has tons of monounsaturated, and as an added bonus, it has 10% omega-3 fatty acids. Perfect heart-healthy oil. The problem was when they fed this oil to rats, they developed heart lesions, their platelets got sticky, they developed vitamin E deficiency, and the stroke-prone rats basically died. So. It was not a heart-healthy oil, but that's not the message that you're getting. No. Yeah. It's an oil that fits the phony theory. The facts be damned. You know, it fits the theory, and, and it's cheap. It was promoted as being healthy, and now it's filtered down into the whole food supply.